Well, mainly I do, I try and stick with most of the body work, paint, uh, fabrication, fiberglass, um, sound systems, TVs, lights. I get into it all, making panels, wrapping panels. I, there isn't anything that I don't do. I've been working on cars since I was probably knee high. My dad's always had a collision shop and restoration business and I've always stuck with it. I moved out here, um, I was staying with my dad shortly, going to school at Baker College and I was putting in applications, resumes and Chris found me and I came in for the uh, interview and hired in on the spot. Uh, a lot of drinking got me there. Uh, I'm 27, I got four DUIs. So it was, it was a rough road, it is what it is, you know, you face the consequences. Like in the summertime, people see the tether and they're like, oh, aren't you ashamed of that? And I'm like, no, it really doesn't matter because it is what it is. People make mistakes, I just happen to be one to get caught. Basically what I do is we do like a mock-up of what we need, we'll draw it all out, and then my job is to make it out of metal, to fabricate it, make pieces fit. Well, I first learned it on up north at Buddy's Farms and stuff like that. We would uh, build like three wheelers and things. Um, did all that jazz, it was fun, I loved it. And then I met my girlfriend, moved down here and needed a job, looked on Craigslist, found Chris, called me back like an hour later, super excited. Hey man, you gotta come in, check this job out, man. Come see what we do. And 20 minutes later, I was building buses. <laughs> so, all of the structure and decorative elements of these buses start off either as steel or as wood uh, two-dimensional panels. Um, and so they, they get parted uh, out. Um, you define the parameters, their sizes, their shapes uh, in a variety of computer programs. Honestly, it's a lot of fun. Um, I like, I've always liked getting my hands dirty and being able to do some welding and then do some fiberglass and then do some woodworking, so. Uh, the worst part is the commute. Um, well, originally I started to help them out with the Jim Beam bus because they needed some extra hands. The gate was getting down to the wire. And so my brother, um, Ryan, he, he had asked me, we were playing Black Ops one night, and he was like, oh yeah, how about, um, you know, you looking for any extra work? I'm like, I'll wait. And then, so he ended up having to, you know, call me. He was like, yeah, you want to come down? He came down and then it worked out that way. So when I, I interviewed one day and I was hired the next day, and then I cleaned off the desk because it was this huge mess. Then I was off that day because I was working another job at a deli. And I came back and the mess was back. So I had to tell him, this is not how we're going to do things. Obviously, it's a tape measure, high heel. When I started working here, it was already on the desk. But it was covered in dust. And it just showed that it needed a warm touch around it. I own uh, Detroit Custom Coach. Um, I also do a bit of designing, and I do work in the shop. But I, uh, I pay the bills. So it was from Night Move uh, running buses that we kind of began to customize buses and build limousines. Uh, we built a custom limo bus. Someone wanted to buy it. We sold it to them and we decided maybe we should build another one. And that's kind of how we got rolling on this thing, doing custom buses and custom builds and vehicles and things like that. As we're walking this way, you can see the Jim Beam bus is uh, basically 99% complete. Uh, we're just waiting for a final logo to go up top and we got these guys are working on fab refabricating some of the brackets. Um, for the bumper that apparently I messed up, even though I didn't fabricate them. All right, thanks for coming by the shop, guys. Uh, we hope to see you at Detroit Custom Coach pretty soon, and you can film us building more of these big, fantastical vehicles.